Hi, this is Crystal from Crystallized Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to dip dye a crochet project. This necessarily doesn't have to be for a crochet project. You could also do yarn. Um, I've always done this with macrame. This is actually my first project um, with crochet actually dip dyeing. And I really enjoy doing this because I can do colors that I want, and it's just another fun way to be crafty with crochet. So a few things you're going to need is you're going to need a project. I have one here, and it is a coaster, and then I have a little string in there, and I will discuss that in a minute. But you're going to need a project. You're going to want either wool or cotton, and then you're going to want some sort of dye. I have this all-purpose dye. I have multiple colors. Obviously, I like blue, and I like green. So you're going to want to have some sort of all-purpose dye. You could also use food coloring. I've also seen like Kool-Aid packets being used. I do the all-purpose dye. So you're going to need something in a color of your choice. You can also get dye fixative. I don't use it, but that is something else that you could look into. You're going to want a plastic container. I have a plastic container right here. It's full of hot water. We'll go over the specifics of this. But you do not want aluminum. So you definitely want plastic. Um, that could definitely ruin your project. Depending on the size of your project is going to depend on the size that you need. Um, I'm just using this little coaster. And so this is big enough to see. Um, I've used an ice cream um, pail before. I've used a pitcher before. If you have a really large project, a five gallon bucket might be required. Um, old Tupperware would also work. So some sort of a plastic container. Again, um, it can be something else just as long as it's not aluminum. You will need gloves and safety glasses. Um, I steal these from my husband all the time. Um, if you don't have a pair handy at your home, I do recommend um, going out and buying a pair because this will keep your eyes protected. You don't want dye in your eyes. And gloves, obviously you don't want dye all over your hands either. You want some sort of a surface protector. I have, um, you could use, oh, it's going to get a little loud. I have an old tablecloth here with cute little blue hearts and clouds, and I believe there's elephants on it. Um, something to protect your surface. You could use saran wrap as long as it's overlapping and you're really making sure that no water or dye seeps through that because you definitely don't want to wreck whatever surface that you're working on. You're going to want um, a pair of tongs. You could also do, like you could string this project up and loop it through a wooden dowel and then keep or a wooden ring and then put that ring through the dowel across whatever pro or whatever container you're working on so that's another way to remove your project somehow you need to get in there and grab it you could also use a gloved hand as well i like to use my tongs you're going to need pardon the noise a drying rack. I just have a cookie sheet that I use um, for drying. Uh, crochet projects do take a while to dry out and so we're going to remove as much water as we can and then we're going to sit it on the drying rack so it dries evenly. You're also going to want like an old towel and again depending on the size of the project is going to depend on how big you need your towel or dishcloth to be, maybe it's a really old blanket if you're trying to dip dye a lap blanket in a five gallon pail or something along those lines. So those are the, the items that you need. Some other things to consider is you could add salt um, somewhere in this process. We'll go over that in a moment. Um, salt enhances color. Uh, one teaspoon of liquid dish detergent allows for even dyeing, and then citric acid crystals could also be used. Today I'm just doing the very basic dip dye and I'm not adding anything, so I don't have any of that here. But salt 
liquid dish detergent and citrus Citric acid crystals are some other things that you may want or need for your project. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start our project and get this little coaster dip dyed. Okay, step one for dip dyeing your crochet project. First of all, you're going to need a crochet project. I hope you already have that. For the first step, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to soak your project and a swatch or a little sample of the same type of yarn that you used for your project in a water mixture. So this water consists of four cups of water and a fourth a cup of vinegar. Now if you have a bigger project, you're going to want to add more water and add more vinegar in the same ratio. So by soaking this in 30, for 30 minutes, you're going to definitely get those fibers soaked and ready for the dyeing process. For the little strand or swatch, you're always going to want to test your color beforehand. So I just took a little bit of that yarn and I have it soaking for the same exact amount of time as this project. And I'm not going to do two separate dyeing processes, but I'm, I did want to show you my little sample there and I will also dye that as well as this. So that has already been soaking for 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put on my safety glasses and we have gloves here. We're going to want the gloves on. So being safe, gloves and safety glasses. Step two, we're going to prep our workstation. Now, I don't want this top ruined, and I like to work by a sink. Unfortunately, I don't have the privilege of working by a sink with my setup here, so I will be kind of running back and forth, but I do want to protect this table. So I'm going to take that plastic tablecloth, and I'm just going to lay that down and get that all ready for the dyeing process. Now that I'm protected and my table is protected, we're going to prep our water. So I have that soaking, but then I also heated up in my plastic bowl um, water. So you, you want to follow the instructions per whatever dye you're using. A lot of times you're going to want to have hot water. And by hot, I mean 140 degrees, I believe is what this dye recommends. Um, this has been sitting here for a little bit, so I still hope it's up to temperature. But again, you're going to want hot water. This is where you're going to want to add any of the additives and the dye. So let's go and pick... Uh, I have not used the emerald. So we're going to add the emerald. Oh, and my cap. My thing is brand new. All right. When you add dye, you want to add less to start because you can always add more if your little test sample doesn't turn out the way you want it to but you really can't make this lighter um, by adding water so we're just going to add some I'm going to find my tongs and I'm just gonna just mix it up just a little Again, this is where you want to add any additives, any of the salt or the liquid dish detergent or the crystals. This is also the process or the part of the process that you want to test your little swatch. So my little yarn here, I'm just going to put it in. Now you want to test your swatch exactly how long you're going to test whatever your project is going to be in here for. So I believe this dye says you could dye for up to 60 minutes. I normally keep my projects, macrame, crochet, doesn't matter, yarn, um, in for about 30. And then you're going to want to pull it and see exactly how much dye actually got into the, the yarn that you're using. Um, and obviously this is not 30 minutes and I'm afraid to add more because this isn't an accurate test swatch but I think I am going to add a little bit more and I'm just going to stick that in there 
I'm going to swirl this around a little bit. And we're going to pretend that after 30 minutes, this little piece is exactly how I want it to, to be. So I'm going to take out and squeeze out a little bit of this vinegar water. Now I'm just going to place it into my bowl. Oh, that's such a beautiful color. I'm glad I went with the emerald and not blue. So again, this is where gloves come in handy because you definitely don't want to get dye on your hands. And again, please do a test swatch so you don't ruin whatever project you're working on. This is tiny. I could easily make another one if it's not the color that I like. But if you're working on a large project or something that you spent a lot of time on, you definitely don't want to ruin it by not testing out a test strip of yarn for the color. Um, this is where, again, you would add more if you need it. I'm just going to rinse off my hands and I'm going to close up my dye because I don't want that to spill all over. I'm going to set that over here. And this is where we kind of just wait. So I'm going to let this sit for 30 minutes and then we're going to come back and check it out. All right, it has been 30 minutes now since we stuck our coaster in. And before I get started, I'm going to put my gloves back on. And I'm going to use the tongs, but just in case. Let's see what it looks like. I was tempted to peek at it. All right, so this is the emerald color yarn, and I really love that color. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of get it the best way possible here and kind of have it drip out. And the only thing I did in between um, the videos while I waited for this to sit in for 30 minutes was I emptied out my vinegar water solution just so I could put my crochet project in there. And then I'm going to rinse it out. The directions for this dye say to rinse it with cold water. Um, again, make sure to read your directions on here. Um, da -da, fabric will look darker when wet and prior to washing, rinse with cool water until rinse water begins to run clear. Um, so I'm going to go do that now and then I will come back and show you the next step. Okay. I ran my crochet project through cold water several times and that is what it looks like at the moment. Now you don't want to wring this out, you're going to you're going to definitely ruin the project. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze as much as I can out. Again, you don't want to wring it out or anything like that. And because drying can take a while, what you want to do with your old icky towel that you don't mind getting dye on. I'm just going to roll it and push just to kind of get some excess water out as much as possible before I actually start drying this. Get my head out of the way here. That is about as good as I'm going to get it. And this is where your drying rack comes in. So, let's see, I have a little bit of water there. So I'm going to set that out just like so to dry. This is also going to somewhat block it. Um, if you're doing a project, you definitely don't want to consider this blocking after this dries if you want to do a wet block or a steam block depending on what your preference for blocking is definitely do that um, but you can see this is already taking shape really really nicely and um, the corners really aren't curling or anything like that now you're going to let this sit until this dries completely um, being on a drying rack you don't have to worry about flipping or anything like that um, at least 24 hours um, for that and that is how you dip dye a crochet project. 
big or small. You can also do macrame and yarn. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified anytime there's a pattern or tutorial released. Thank you. Bye.